Hello and welcome to this Azure Roadmap 2025. So today we all know that cloud computing is the backbone of modern businesses. And when it comes to cloud platforms, Microsoft Azure is one of the largest providers as it powers some major startups, global enterprises, and even Fortune 500 companies. And over 95% of them rely on Azure services. Moreover, Microsoft is set to invest $3 billion in the next two years to expand its AI and cloud infrastructure in India, marking the largest expansion in the country's history and driving cloud jobs to grow at nearly 25% per year. But now, here's the catch. Azure has over 200 services and more than 15 certifications. And now, if you are a beginner, it might feel confusing. And that's where you can get stuck wondering, should you start with the certifications, hands-on projects, or focus on coding first? Or do you even need the programming skills to begin your cloud journey? Well, that's exactly why I have created this No BS Azure Roadmap for 25. Here, we will guide you step by step covering everything from fundamentals to advanced services. This roadmap is also aligned with Microsoft certification paths, ensuring you build skills while preparing for official certifications. Plus, I'll share some free Microsoft resources you can start learning as well as practicing for absolutely free. So by the end of this guide, you will have a clear, structured and actionable plan to get started with your Azure cloud career in 2025. So let's dive in. And the first step should always be all about building your foundation strong. So if you are new to cloud, start with the AZ900 Azure Fundamental Certifications. Here you will learn what cloud computing is, why businesses are moving to Azure, and the benefits like cost savings, scalability, and speed. You will also learn the differences between public, private, and hybrid cloud models. This step also introduces you to virtual machine storage accounts as well as Azure Active Directory. Now, here's some important part. As you're just starting out in this step, don't just memorize these concepts. Focus on why they matter, where they are actually used, which will help you understand why some services are fully managed by Microsoft, while others are managed and configured completely by the user. So once you complete this AZ900 certification, you will have a solid foundation for everything else on top of it, as this step provides the vocabulary that you need to understand the cloud. Now, moving to the next step, and we jump deeper into the certifications, let's pause and talk about something most don't cover, but is equally important. And that is the core skills that actually make Azure easier to understand and work. Certifications are sure great milestones, but without a solid foundation and key skills, Azure can feel like a maze of dashboards, portals, and services. To understand it in a better way, focus on these essentials. Firstly, learn basic Linux commands for managing files and process handling, as most of the Azure workloads run on Linux. Next is networking concepts like IP addressing, DNS, subnets, and firewalls that will make Azure virtual networks much easier to understand. After that, basic Python will help you for automation, scripting, infrastructure as a code, and general cloud development tasks. And finally, understand virtualization because knowing how the virtual machines work is key to understanding the cloud architecture and infrastructure. And you will hardly require two weeks to learn the skills, but they will make labs, projects, and certification preparation much smoother and give you an upper age in cracking the interviews as well. Moving to the third step, that is role-based associate certification. So once your foundation is solid, it's time to choose a role-based path. Here, most learners start with either AZ104, that is Azure Administrator Associate, or AZ204, that is Azure Developer Associate. And for AI and data-focused roles, go with certifications like AI102 or DP203. Now the first path here is AZ104, Azure Administrator, which focuses on managing cloud infrastructure. Here you will also learn about subscriptions, deploying virtual machines, configuring storage, and setting up networks. Next, we have AZ204, Azure Developer, which focuses on building applications where you will work with Azure Functions, App Service, Cosmos DB, and automation tools that will provide you with the skills to deploy real-world cloud solutions. Then, if you're data-focused, certifications like AI102, Azure AI Engineer and DP203 Data Engineer are perfect for you, which teaches you how to design and work with data pipelines, analytic solutions, and AI-powered applications. Completing this associate level certification shows employers that you can actually solve real-world problems in Azure. So with every lab you complete and tasks you practice, it will build your skills and just importantly, your confidence. Now, as we move further with advanced certifications, you need to get familiar with the core services that altogether make Azure work. Think of this as the building blocks behind the certifications. Once you understand them, using Azure becomes much more intuitive and logical, which is a major step before crafting effective solutions combining all of it. So first are compute services like Azure Virtual Machines, App Services, Functions, 
which helps you run workloads and understand resource management. Next are storage services like Azure Blob Storage, Disk Storage, and File Storage to organize and protect the data. After that comes networking. Services like VNets, Load Balancers, DNS, and Express Route helps you manage connectivity and design resilient architectures. Then we have security services like Azure Active Directory, Key Vault, Microsoft Defender, and Security Center to help you secure resources and manage identity and access. And finally, databases and serverless services like SQL Database, Cosmos DB, Functions, and Logic Apps that allows you to process and store data without the need of managing the servers. And this step will take around three to four weeks. But in this step, it's all about understanding what each service does and how it fits into the bigger picture, as it will make the experience smoother and things more meaningful in Azure. Now, once you have learned the core services, start applying your knowledge with hands-on projects. So first, deploy a website using app service and a blob storage to host a simple website. This gives you hands-on practice on compute, storage, and basic networking services. Next, build a serverless photo uploader app with Azure functions API management, blob storage, and Cosmos DB, which helps you get experience with automation and serverless architecture. After that, deploy a three-tier application with CI CD using the app service, SQL database, and Azure DevOps pipelines, which helps you learn automation, scalability, and continuous deployment. Then, try setting up Key Vault Security Center, Azure Monitor to secure and monitor your application, which lets you practice policies, alerts, and logging. Finally, take the Cloud Resume Challenge. Here you can combine multiple Azure services like compute, storage, and networking, security, and monitoring to build a full portfolio-ready project that demonstrates your skills end-to-end. -end. So start building these projects using Azure Free Tier or Microsoft Learn Sandboxes, then gradually add up complexity to boost your profile. These projects build practical skills and a portfolio that employers actually value. So after mastering the basics, we move into the advanced certifications. Now that we have completed the associate level certifications, our next natural milestone is AZ305, that is Azure Solutions Architect. And this is where you start thinking like a cloud architect. Here you will design complex systems, hybrid cloud multi-tier applications, secure networks, and scalable databases. You will also learn the disaster recovery planning and cost optimization, which are the critical skills for any architect. And for those who are passionate about automation and efficiency, the AZ400, that is Azure DevOps Engineer, can be the next step. This certification teaches CI/CD pipelines, automations, monitoring with services like Azure Repos, artifacts, test plans, and even GitHub Actions. And this is essential if you want to work in DevOps or cloud automation. So these advanced certifications are definitely more challenging. Thus, it is recommended to have a minimum of 2-3 years of experience before you actually pursue them. But the value to this is significant. As they can demonstrate, you can design, optimize, and automate real-world Azure solutions to position yourself for senior-level roles. So once you have mastered the core and advanced certifications, it's time to focus on the specialization. It not only makes you more effective, but also positions you as an authority in your chosen area, attracting senior level opportunities and promising higher salaries. So at this stage, your focus shifts from learning services to strategically applying Azure to solve complex business challenges, making you a true subject matter expert. And here, your path should align with your career goals and strength. So now here are some of the key Azure specializations. Firstly, we have AZ204, that is Azure Developer Specialty, which prepares you to build and maintain cloud native applications on Azure on an expert level. Then we have AZ120, that is Azure for SAP workloads, that will help you handle the enterprise level deployments and manage SAP workloads on Azure. Finally, we have AZ140, that is Azure Virtual Desktop, that equips you to design and implement virtual desktop solutions for any remote or hybrid work. Also, before diving into the specialized certifications, it's recommended to have three to five years of hands-on Azure experience, as specializations are meant to demonstrate depth of knowledge, so employers can expect you to be comfortable with Azure fundamentals, role-based skills, and advanced architectures before pursuing the specialization certifications. So now coming to the step seven, that is the recap and career preparation. So we started with AZ900 to build a solid foundation in Azure, then we strengthened the core technical skills, Pick your role-based certifications, get hands-on with the core services, then advance to the architect or DevOps path, specialize, and finally, showcase your portfolio and expertise. So now that you understand the complete roadmap to learn Azure as a beginner, we all know that technical skills are just a part of the story. With that, you also need to showcase the projects you build for the portfolio on GitHub, share the demos and walkthroughs on LinkedIn to showcase your real-world skills, participate in Microsoft Learn modules, Azure Labs, and community forums. 
As for the resources, go to the Microsoft Learn platform, which has free guided modules and sandboxes, where you can learn, practice, and explore for free. Then we have Azure DevOps Labs that gives you hands-on practice, and lastly, Microsoft Student Hub that provides you with credits and beginner-friendly path if you are just starting out. So follow this roadmap consistently, and within months, you won't just have certificates, but you will have skills, a portfolio, and the confidence to thrive as a Azure professional. Remember this: roadmap is about building the right skills in the right order, gaining confidence, and demonstrating the capability you have. So, if you found this roadmap helpful, make sure to like this, subscribe, and comment below which certification you're starting with.